Hello everybody, it's Menopause Barbie. Welcome back. In the last few tutorials, we've been focusing on diet, and today we're going to switch gears to lifestyle. If you're following along with your outline notes, we're covering pages 16 through 19, and there's nothing at all in the book for you. I'm so glad to be meeting with you today because so much has changed since I last saw you. <laughs> I moved from Cape Town, South Africa to Buenos Aires, Argentina. So my life has changed a lot. Fits in perfectly with a tutorial on lifestyle, doesn't it? You know how it is when you move. Everything is new. New environment, new neighbors, new home. And in my case, new country, new language, and some discoveries of some new menopausal options for you. I really have already found some new things to show you eventually. You know, one of the things I like about my crazy lifestyle of moving to a different country each year is sharing it with you. So as we go along, I'll give you a peek into my Argentine life, just like I did with my South African life. But don't worry, I, I won't give you these tutorials in Spanish. But you know, you're still going to get some more peeks into my previous South African life because I shot some of those videos in advance, speculating that they'd be easier to shoot and better for you if I did them there rather than here, mostly because this is a Spanish-speaking country. <laughs> but you'll get to pop back and forth between the two countries a few times. You see, you have to know that I don't prepare these tutorials in re real time. They take lots of preparation. You can't imagine how much work I put in to each of these tutorials. Hey, she's not the only one. I'm working too. <laughs> that's, that, that's my husband, George. <laughs> he helps me with all this stuff. He's right. He does a lot of work for these. <laughs> we have to make time to find models, build props, run around looking for herbs, scheduling shoots, all kinds of things. So I prepare them well in advance. So when you see them, I've done them months ago. So let's talk about lifestyle. Lifestyle means many different things. It can refer to where you live, how you live, what you eat, what kind of work you do, which activities you engage in. So many, many, many different things. Obviously, we can't cover everything about lifestyle. So I'm simply going to give you some lifestyle pearls that are pertinent to menopause, just as I did for diet. And actually, these pearls apply to a lot more than just menopause and to a lot more people than just menopausal women. But the ones I'm gonna give you are the things I think are especially important when you enter menopause. And when we start covering each of the symptoms and the diseases, you'll notice that these pearls that I give you today come up over and over again as lifestyle options for managing your menopause. So let's go to number one. Number one lifestyle pearl is get your exercise. Now, you're gonna see exercise more than anything else as a management option for menopause. And because it's so important, I'm going to mention it now as the most important lifestyle factor of all, but I'm going to discuss it in more detail in the next tutorial. It's just too significant to lump it in with all these other pearls. I guess you could say it's a diamond rather than a pearl. So tune into the next video for a presentation and demonstration of exercise pearls. Number two, don't smoke. You see these cigarettes? Look, it says danger, smoking can kill you. There's not one single good thing about smoking. It gives you lung cancer, it increases your risk of a bunch of other cancers, it increases your risk of a heart attack, it stains your teeth, it makes you stink, it wastes your time, it costs as much as a gold mine and it's very unrefined. Don't smoke. So much for that one. <laughs> Pearl number three, maintain a normal weight. Get a bathroom scale, have one in your house. Maintain your weight. Almost everything is related to your weight. It's sort of like your weight carries a lot of weight. <laughs> a balance between your diet and exercise is going to be a big key to managing your menopause. 
Pearl number four, get plenty of sleep. You know, I didn't discover sleep until I retired from medicine, and boy, is it a luxury. Everything depends on sleep. If you can, go to sleep at the same time every night. We all have this thing called a diurnal rhythm. It's what your body naturally wants to do in terms of when it wants to wake up and when it wants to go to sleep. We all have a natural one. Now, I happen to be a morning person. I get up at 4 a.m. every morning, have my whole life without an alarm. And when I was born, <laughs> my mom hated me. Because my mom is a night owl. She wants to go to sleep at 4 a.m. and wake up at noon. So, you know, we all have a, have a rhythm and you just have to be aware of it and honor it if you can. If you can, wake up without an alarm because that allows your body to do what it wants to do naturally. I mean, do you even know how many hours of sleep your body wants each night? When was the last time you slept? as much as you wanted to without having to worry about what happens the mor next morning and when do you have to get up and who do you have to take here and there. See what your body wants. Pearl number five, adhere to routines. Now I know it sounds boring, but you know what? Your body wants routines and every other animal on earth adheres to routines. So why not us? I mean we want all this excitement and you know, variety, but the truth is your body wants routines. Pearl number six, avoid the sun. I think this is the very best way to avoid the sun, but then again, that's just me, right? Okay, sun, of, sun avoidance. The sun is no friend to your skin. And everybody says, oh yes, but I need enough vitamin D. Well, guess what? All you need to get enough vitamin D, D is sun exposure on your hands and arms for 20 minutes, four to five times per week for four to mo five months out of the year. That's all it takes. And sunscreen, it's good, but it's overrated. It doesn't protect your skin from sun exposure or prevent sun damage. What sunscreen does is slow the rate of damage to your skin. So the best thing to do is to cover your skin. I mean, why does everyone think tan skin is more peeling anyway? I mean, it's burnt. It's damaged. Why do people think it's pretty? So cover your skin with clothing. You know, long sleeves, the hat, gloves. Okay, now, I go to extremes, I know. You don't have to do what I do. I look like a beekeeper, <laughs> but it works. I mean, it still protects your skin, so try it. <laughs> Pearl number seven, practice good hygiene. All kinds of hygiene. Dental hygiene, skin hygiene, facial hygiene, body hygiene, vaginal hygiene. There are all kinds of hygiene. Practice good hygiene, it really does make a huge difference in your quality of life. Pearl number eight, create balance in your life. This is a balancing scale where you weigh one thing against another. Now, balance means a lot of different things. I mean, don't let any one thing monopolize all your time. Don't let anything totally consume you. You want to give equal time to work and play, family time and personal time, family and friends, food intake, exercise output, how much you embrace aging versus how much you fight aging, balance. All these things require you to kind of think about how much are you putting into each of them. Pearl number nine. Don't conform. Need I say more? I mean, I'm not a conformist. You know, think for yourself. This is a time in your life when you get to be who you really are. Make your menopause look however you want it to look. Do your own thing. You know, make your choices with conviction and stick by them. Don't be shy to be who you really are. Pearl number 10. Pursue a passion. You know, paint, learn to play the piano. I mean, go do something that you've 
that you're, that you're passionate about. Be passionate about something and it'll just make your heart sing. You know, dare to do something that you've always dreamed of doing and, you know, you've forgotten because life kind of got in the way and took over and, you know, now it's been 20, 30 years and you haven't ever done that thing that was passionate for you many years ago. Well, go, go for it. Do it. Pearl number 11, adopt some kind of stress reducing or relaxation technique, you know, meditation. I mean, it can be anything. Just incorporate it into your life on a regular basis and as needed. You know, sometimes you do something regularly, but sometimes you need a little more just because life can get stressful. So whether it's meditation or yoga or getting regular massages, do something that relieves stress for you. Pearl number 12, pamper yourself like a manicure. I can't see your mani my manicure, but I have a manicure always because that's one of my pampering things. See, you deserve to feel good about how you treat yourself. And you treat yourself as a reflection of your own self-value. So the better you are to yourself, the better you like yourself. And when you take care of yourself, it'll help you take care of everyone else around you. So don't think of it as selfish. Think of it as necessary. Pearl number 13 is take up a hobby. You know, I mean, go learn how to knit or something. I mean, just do something that's just kind of a, a pastime, a hobby, something that, you, that makes you feel good, that makes you feel creative. You know, sing in a choir or learn to sew or go paint. Do, do, just do something that's a hobby that's, that's fun for you. And number 14, create your own identity. Okay, this one is very, very important. Your business card, your name tag and all, that's your identity. You know, it's nice to be someone's wife or someone's mother, but it's better to be yourself. Have you ever heard the saying, be yourself, everyone else is taken? I mean, whose life is it anyway? Be yourself. My husband made up this thing called the comma principle. And it states that everyone wants to be special in some way. So when someone says your name, they follow it with a descriptive statement that, that defines you. You want people to say, Mary Smith, comma, the scientist. Or Jane, comma, the wonderful receptionist with the great friendly personality. You don't want people to say Kathy, comma, uh, Kathy who? You know, this is the comma principle. What comes after your comma? If you don't have a comma, then you must be in a coma. You know, go out and put something after your comma that makes you feel proud and makes you like who you are. And it makes sure it's something all about you as opposed to being your identity with relation to someone else, you know? Number 15. Learn to say no. Even if you have to carry around a sign, learn to say no. You don't have to please everyone. In fact, you don't have to please anyone but yourself. And pleasing yourself will automatically make you more pleasing to everyone else. And one way you learn to say no is by making sure you don't overload your to-do list. Are you cringing? Well, let me tell you something. I have no trouble at all saying no. For example, I hate sleepovers. You know, having people spend the night at my house or spending the night at other people's house, that's what I call a sleepover. So when someone suggests a sleepover, I just say, I quit having slumber parties when I was 12. <laughs> And I'm not going to start having them again now. It's a hotel or nothing. Once I was telling my friend Sharon about this, you know, she just had a bunch of house guests and she was moaning about how exhausted she was. And when I told her that I had no problem saying the truth about my aversion to sleepovers, she just sat back and she smiled and chuckled and said, I just love this. It's so great. And I looked at her and said, well, what's so great? She says, oh, your brutal honesty. She said, it's so wonderful. So the message I have for you is this. 
As uncomfortable as it may be to say no, you might just find that a lot of people agree with you and they were just afraid to say no. And the fact that you say no will be something that is inspiring to them. Number 16, don't be a doormat. This is a doormat. You know what you do with doormats? Everybody steps all over them. Don't be a doormat. You know, you have probably spent the last 30 years catering to everyone else in your family. Aren't you tired of having everyone walk all over you? Pick up the rug. See the beautiful foundation you've been hiding underneath it. Don't be anyone's doormat. Pearl number 17 is enjoy the journey. This is a map of Argentina. <laughs> As you migrate through the change, enjoy the metamorphosis. You know, everything in life is a process. And when it comes to menopause, there are huge cultural differences in attitudes about it. Asians revere and praise and welcome menopause, and they have no problems with it. They don't have nearly as many hot flashes as other women. They go through menopause much more easily. Americans hate menopause. We, we fear it, we avoid it, we do everything we can to pretend like it's not gonna happen. Well, you know what, it's gonna happen. So your attitude about menopause is going to be important. So enjoy the journey, slow down. What's the rush? Just take a deep breath. Enjoy the fact that you're going through a metamorphosis that is going to make you feel empowered. And you've got me. I'm going to show you how to make it as easy and pleasant as possible, and you're going to get to do whatever you want to do. Pearl number 18. See the world through different eyes. Expand your vision. These are some of those 3D glasses. <laughs> from the movie theater. <laughs> you know, you can do that. You can expand your vision in many ways. You can travel. You can work with people who are different from yourself. You can offer to help the needy or the ill. You can do anything that helps you open your mind, open your eyes to a different way of seeing the world. It will teach you so much and you'll love it. And number 19 is, similar in that it's never, 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 never stop learning. See? Book, language book, French. The more you learn, the more you realize how little you know. So go take a class, learn a new language, learn to, you know, a hobby again, painting or dancing or something. Just feed your brain fresh food. It'll make all the difference in the world. Number 20. Have sex. I don't have a demonstration for that one. <laughs> but sex used to be fun. You have to find ways to make it fun again. You've got to laugh at yourself. You know, lingerie is a great fun sexual thing. Well, you know, when I show this to women, they cringe and they go, oh my God, I'd be so uncomfortable in that. Well, you know what? Well, so what? Maybe it's just going to be funny. But sex comes in many varieties. Sexy comes in many flavors. So. You know, you don't have to feel like don't, you look... Don't you think we could wrap it up now? <laughs> don't That's you George think again. We <laughs> he wants to go play with the lingerie, I'm sure. <laughs> and last but definitely not least, live it up. Have fun. Most people live like they're never going to die, and they die without ever having lived. Please don't be one of them. So in summary, I haven't told you anything you didn't already know. Most of what I've told you probably just got filed away somewhere and forgotten. And the big message that I have for you is that this is the time to reinvent yourself. Much of this serves the purpose of repositioning your mindset and opening yourself to a wide variety of options, not only for your menopause, for your life. So that does it for today. Next time we're going to go to the gym together and I'm going to teach you some basic rules about exercise, which of course is the most important lifestyle option of all for managing your menopause. So that's it for today. I'll leave you now and until then I'll say 
Bye.